Citadel Capital needs little introduction, but for those who might not know about it, it is the leading investment company in Africa and the Middle East. And it's investing in five core industries, which are energy, transportation, agri-foods, mining, and cement. Industries which are defining the future of the continent. And let's add to that macro finance and healthcare. So you've pretty much got your bases covered. So we're very privileged to have with us the founder and chairman of Citadel Capital, and that's Ahmed Haikal. Many thanks. So let's check your microphone is on. That sounds like it's working. So, yours, yep, sounds good. So you took the plunge a long time ago. You're on the front line of investment. Just tell us, what are you seeing? If you look at Africa, the, the case for Africa has just been made by President Barroso and Chairwoman Lugos. Um, the, the, there are three big issues. There is the demographics of Africa, there is the resources of Africa, and I, the, the new area that is emerging as far as the democracy dividends improve governance. And we have with us uh, Mo Ibrahim here who uh, has given a prize uh, for the better governance within Africa, and that is happening, although at a pace that is slower, but it's certainly a very important development throughout Africa. So in terms of investment, though, you've chosen these five core industries. Now, we've understood a little bit about that so far, but can you tell us from your perspective, why have you chosen these, and, and what kind of uh, plan have you got in place? If you look at, again, demographics, that means consumer, it means microfinance, it means food, it means transportation and logistics, it means infrastructure. So when, I, when we say energy, uh, uh, energy in, in Citadel means much broader than upstream oil and gas. It means electricity, it means natural gas grids. So uh, uh, all of, of it uh, happening within the, the theme of consumer that is taking place in Africa. The, the, obviously, as far as resources, you're talking about mining, you're talking about also upstream oil and gas. So the, those, if you look at the five sectors that, that we, are, we have, are all informed by the three main ideas, grand ideas of why this is, the next 50 years are the African years in my view. Again, the three themes being demographics, resources, and governance. But one thing is you have been willing to take on board risk and something we spoke about yesterday. How does that, uh, how do you integrate the whole risk issue? First, the, the most important thing is how you finance yourself, believe it or not. We have chosen a long time ago to finance ourselves through DFIs, through what we call within Citadel the triple combo. A triple combo is a combination of sovereign wealth funds, DFIs, developmental finance institutions, and ECAs, export credit agencies. So if you look at some of our big projects where we have financed very large projects, including, for example, recently a $3.7 billion refinery in Egypt, uh, this is, again, DFIs, so we have the IFC, we have the EG, the German government, we have FMO, the Dutch government, we have Q, Q, uh, uh, QPI, the Qatari government, we have the Egyptian government, and then on top of that you have ECAs that are in the form of JBIC, Japanese Bank for International Cooperation, Nexi, Japanese, Korean Exim Bank, the European Investment Bank, and the African Development Bank. So by the time you have all those stakeholders in a single project that is on, on board, I, I think it shields you tremendously from unneeded uh, uh, scrutiny. If the scrutiny is valid, then you, you ought to be scrutinized, but it, it, it gives you a certain level of uh, uh, um, protection against um, Gov unneeded sometimes government interventions. 
but uh, again, I want to clarify that this is uh, uh, that sometimes there are there are bureaucracies that that uh, uh, try to scrutinize here and there without merit, and, and then there are the things that you do wrong and you ought to be punished for them. So, so th there is a clear distinction that needs to, to, to happen here. The, the second thing that, that also needs to happen is that clearly the case that you should not in Africa and in any most, peop most places you should not engage in politics. In, 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 in our part of the world, politics and business don't mix. And, and it should be a, a, a very important uh, a central theme that please do not get involved in politics. And I try to remind myself sometimes, you know, don't be vocal uh, 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 about certain issues because, you know, I have shareholders at stake and I can't, I can't, I should not be risk that, risking that for the sake of, you know, j just being outspoken for uh, regarding certain issues. The third element that where, which is extremely important is the way we finance ourselves dictate a certain way of doing business. All those DFIs expect us to do business in a certain way and that is central. So A, all sorts of human rights. You need to be very careful regarding uh, gender discrimination, uh, racial discrimination, uh, ethnic discrimination. Uh, so all of those central themes the way we pay taxes, the way we conduct ourselves, etc. A, a whole through a slew of, of certain basic principle that you have to adhere to because if you don't do that, those people will not come and give you money for, for at all. You know, nobody at the end of the day wants their name dragged as a result of, a fin of financing a certain project in, in, in nowhere, anywhere. So those are very big institutions that have reputations to keep and you have to, to understand that Get, being the recipient of money from those DFIs entail a certain way to conduct yourself, a certain way of doing business. So, so those three big elements, A, the way you finance yourself dictate a certain way of doing business. Two, by having them, it's, it's a, it's a, a protect, it gives you a certain level of protection. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so, so those are the, the different elements of risk mitigation. And then in, in terms of institutional involvement, and you touched on this with the DFIs, I suppose there's a certain amount of capacity building that has to be put in place. Now, what do you see as the priorities in terms of those kind of the capacity building that needs to be taken? Uh, very place? important question, uh, Isabel. Th those institutions have certain way of looking at things both from an environmental and from a social point of view. And the environmental is very clear they will not finance, they will not touch a project that has a, 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 a dubious in, uh, environmental issues. So that ethics is built into it? Uh, you, they, the, uh, the amount of money that we spend on making sure that our projects are, uh, 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 meet the, uh, the EU standard and the US standards regarding uh, environmental studies is unbelievable. We, at a certain point in time, it was a joke within Citadel, we had to spend 300,000 euro uh, uh, for, a pro for, a, for a study that uh, saw that there is no uh, uh, problem on a, a type of lizard that lived in Egypt. So 300,000 euros to make sure that the lizard does not get affected by, uh, it's not a joke. It's sometimes you, you wonder, but you ha this, is, this is the way, this is the way you, they do business and this is the way we have to adhere to it. So, uh, so that, that's on the environmental side. On the social side, uh, likewise, they have very clear rules and it took a long period of adjustment to, to, to move into the sphere of how they look at things and uh, how the capacity building uh, exercise, both in terms of uh, making sure, ensuring that the communities around our projects benefit directly from uh, 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 certain things and indirectly by uh, making sure that uh, NGOs within the, those communities uh, 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 also are kept uh, in, informed and uh, in certain cases uh, uh, the recipient of some of the uh, money that uh, is, is allocated to social and environmental studies. The political situations can change quite rapidly. What do you do when you've invested in a certain area and the situation changes and life becomes more difficult? Can you extract yourself? No. 
we're not, uh, we're not, uh, uh, we, we, when we make decisions to invest, uh, uh, those are very long term uh, investment decisions. How long uh, are we looking? 20 plus years. So uh, it's not money that you can easily extract yourself out of. It's, it's, uh, we're not investors in the stock market where if I don't like a, a country, I will sell tomorrow. Uh, in certain cases, you're there for, for the long haul, and, and when you make your decisions to invest, you have to uh, make sure that those decisions incorporate elements that are very long-term in niche. One of the things that, is, that are very important, that are critical, is to make sure um, that when you make an investment decision, uh, uh, this investment decision is really, really for the long term. And you have to, to you, you will not be able to, to, to say tomorrow, I, I don't like uh, to invest in, you know, it's, it's not clear that you'll always find buyers uh, from, uh, to get you out of your position. So uh, those are very long uh, term investments. So we heard the African Union chairperson, um, Madame Tsuma, talking about tomato ketchup and tomatoes. What are you doing to make sure the tomato ketchup is being made in Africa? She also made a very important point regarding uh, transportation and logistics. Uh, the, the transportation costs within Africa is so high that uh, it makes uh, 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 goods in certain parts of Africa extremely expensive. Both from moving products inland and extracting resource, uh, extracting whatever you want to sell out mm -hmm. outside. Uh, so, so transportation becomes really, really important and we have invested a lot of money in, in transportation and infrastructure. Actually, we, we, we own a very important piece of infras infrastructure within the continent, which is the Mombasa Kampala railway line. Uh, that's, that's a company, and, and yesterday we, we, we bought the remaining 38% of that, so now we own 85% plus of, 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 of this firm. So that's a, a, a key infrastructure project and it can have ripple effects uh, uh, through a, a, a larger parts of Africa, including South Sudan and including the Eastern DRC as well as, Malaw um, um, uh, uh, as, well as uh, Burundi. So, so transport is definitely one issue, but what other areas of infrastructure are crying out for development to enhance business opportunities? I, th I think power, again, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that the case was mentioned. Power is a very important uh, uh, part of, of what ought to be done. Uh, now that there are a lot of oil discoveries and gas discoveries in Africa, uh, uh, Investments, I think, in, in that area are going to, to become uh, uh, more, more uh, uh, pronounced and more important. Uh, again, the, you have to remember that the triple combo is very important. The combination of ECAs, export credit agencies, the developmental finance institutions, and sovereign wealth fund from the Gulf. Sovereign wealth fund from the Gulf, whenever people see Citadel. Citadel does not have the money alone to do all those very large, if you look at uh, uh, $10 billion of, of, of investments that we have throughout the continent today, uh, uh, part of that, an, an important part of that is sovereign wealth fund. We, we, our relationship with the Emirates, with Saudi, with Kuwait and with Qatar allows us to tap into large pools of money that exists within some of those countries to bring them and to intermediate the needs within Africa, the needs for capital within Africa and the, 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 the additional resources that some of those uh, uh, countries have. You're currently, though, the, the, the investment climate and the situation in Africa has changed and we've been hearing that. Now you're now in de-risking mode. Tell me a little bit about that and, and why have you got to that situation now? It, it's very important to to understand the, 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 what the global impact had on a, on, a, on a company like Citadel. You had the years of 2008 to 2011. Those were three very tough years from a global point of view because of the global financial crisis. 
a lot of banks had to, to cut down their balance sheet and to reduce funding, commercial funding, to certain parts of Africa. That for sure uh, was, was a key element. But on top of that, for, for Egypt specific risks, over the last three years, so by the time we took the three years of the brunt of the global financial crisis, we had an additional three years where emerging market benefit tremendously, but we in Egypt did not benefit as a result of the so-called Arab Spring. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, the, 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 we had to reduce the scope of, to, to, to be more um, uh, uh, careful with capital, to reduce our scope to those five industries that you talked about and to sell uh, a, a number of other assets. Uh, uh, you know, had capital been abundant in the, in the world mm -hmm. and in the area where we live in, where we're based, things might have turned differently. But today, over the last uh, uh, year and over the next three years, we are selling down a number of our non-core assets and putting them at work within the, the, the five core assets, that, uh, the core groups, core industries that we, we've talked about. So, so within that also, it meant that we needed to concentrate more on established and successful projects and uh, uh, get rid of three or four of the industries that we would have liked to stay in, but the, for, for capital constraints reasons, we had to make tough choices regarding What's, what are those industries we, we, we chose to stay in and some of those industries we decided to get out of. So briefly, what were the industries you chose to get out of? Uh, we decided to go get out of upstream oil and gas. Mm -hmm. that's, that's an area. Glass business, we have two fantastic glass businesses that we, we decided uh, uh, we needed to get uh, rid of that. Uh, banks, we had a couple of banks uh, throughout the continent. One of them we sold last week in Sudan. Uh, uh, so a number of those, uh, 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 we had three foundries that, that we will sell, that w and then we have a, a mall in, in Egypt that we have decided to sell. So it's just more focused and better utilization of capital uh, in, the, in the future. So you're involved in many African countries. Yes. Now, um, if we look at the continent, are you willing to invest anywhere? No, I'm not willing to invest anywhere. There are, there are certain, I'm not going to name names, I'm, it will get me in trouble. Uh, uh, so, but but uh, uh, there are places, again, if you follow the, the, the rules, the three main drivers of, of investments that I've outlined, mm -hmm. which, is, which is demographics, resources, and governance. Put those three together, and uh, by the time you, you 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 reach where you want those, you will find the countries where they have the best in all three of those cases. And what about the countries that are the best then? Uh, either that we don't have the the the, the uh, you know we cannot invest everywhere. Africa is a, is a huge continent, mm -hmm. and and we need to be uh, cognizant of the fact that no matter what we do, th those are very large projects that we do, and we need to be focused on. Uh, uh, um, on, on, you know, on certain things, and we cannot do everything that we want to do. But within that, also, mm. there are some elements of countries where simply we will not invest. So, but you, you know, you really need to know your market, and I think for you, Egypt is probably a very strong market. It might not <coughs> be necessarily one of the easiest, but you do know it very well. Yeah, we at this point in time we have investments in. Uh, 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 most East African countries. Mm -hmm. We have investments in Egypt, Sudan, South Sudan. We have investments in Kenya, Uganda. We have investments in Ethiopia. Uh, and uh, soon in Mozambique. Uh, so those are some of the countries where we, we have investments. For me, obviously, Egypt uh, presents uh, uh, one a level of familiarity that is extremely high. So this is a market that I know extremely mm -hmm. well. We have approximately six billion of our 10 billion in, in, in Egypt. Uh, uh, we have the capacity to do very large projects in, e in Egypt. Uh, and I think Egypt presents at this point in time uh, a good risk return trade off. Uh, so it's not an easy country to do business in, but it's also uh, uh, has a lot of the elements that we, we, we've spoken about. And you started off with a reasonably small capital. Yes. It's grown exponentially. Yes. Now, how 
And I suppose you can't tell us this very quickly, but how on earth did you manage that? Sure. I, 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 had, I uh, did my studies in the United States. Um, I did my, P my master's and PhD at Stanford University. So I, I have an education, a level of education that is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Stanford is a fantastic place. Uh, and, and then I came back and I invested uh, 100, I borrowed 100,000 pounds from my father, which is $30,000, in a firm called EFG, uh, Egyptian Financial Group. And that firm, uh, actually we've done business with Mo uh, in, in, in 97, uh, uh, and that business grew very fast. Uh, I owned, at a certain point in time, 36% of that firm. That firm today has a market cap of a billion dollars sold that in 2001 and established Citadel Capital with two million pounds, which is about $300,000. And Citadel now has a capital of eight billion pounds, so around a billion one dollars. I, I don't own the firm, I own uh, today about 15% uh, plus voting rights within the firm. But, uh, so I'm, I'm a very large shareholder, but I, I don't own the firm. But that has been the progression, I did not this is how I made the, 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 you can trace the different transactions very clearly to the point to where we are today and you can easily see uh, how, how the progression developed. So it's very clear and traceable uh, returns. So if you could give us some key tips, key tips to those who are looking into investment opportunities in Africa. You have the triple combo, but I don't suppose everybody can do that. <laughs> The, the most important lesson is to know when to walk out of a deal. It's not the, the, the deals that, it's important to recognize which ones will, you try to recognize which ones you will make money, but the most important one are due to, for you to recognize the one that will hurt your reputation. And uh, that, that in my view is, uh, the most important uh, thing is that you know how, when to walk out to say no, I will not do this deal, I have invested time and effort, but no, this has elements that will cause me, to, will, will cause me to, to stay in trouble. By the way, you have to remember that a lot of the private sector in Egypt had suffered uh, blows after blows as a re after the revolution. And I am uh, here with you in, in Brussels. Uh, some of my others, colleague, you know, uh, people in the private sector have not exactly been that fortunate. Uh, they, some of them either had to, ha they have to live in, in England or they have to live, or they are somewhere else in Egypt. So, so I, I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones. And I think, you know, knowing when to say, I'll walk out and I will not do this deal is, is the most important Ahmed Haikal, many thanks. Thank you, Isabel. Sadly, I don't think we are going to have time to take questions because we've run over time quite a lot. But just let you know after the coffee break, there we will be having uh, Antonio Tajani, who is the Vice President of the European Commission, and Erasmus Wencher, who is Deputy Chairman of the African Union and uh, Commission, and they will be discussing further about EU-Africa partnerships. So thank you all.